We thank you this morning. We just worship you because we know you are a good God. We thank you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible says you are the ancient of days. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the beginning and the ending. In you there is no variableness. Your word is yea and amen, sharper than a double-edged sword. It's like your word is like hammer and like fire. Lord, we come to you this morning to feed on your word. And we know you are here with us. <clears throat> the reason why we know you are here with us is your word says, where two or more are gathered in your name, you are there. And whatsoever we ask, as long as we ask in your name, it's sorted. So we're asking for wisdom. We're asking for revelation. We are asking that our hearts will be receptive to your engraved word. <coughs> we are asking that no man will be glorified, not even the preacher, but you alone, in the name of Jesus. Take control, absolute control, full control of our hearts and our lips today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me the privilege to, to share the word again. Um, I say thank you so much. Okay. Um, today we are going to, it's going to be a continuation of um, what I spoke about uh, about five, four weeks ago. Um, we are in a dangerous time, a dangerous season, but we have a tool that we can use that God has given to us, our mouth. So we'll go further to look at three things, including our mouth this morning. And uh, just to recap briefly, for those who have not listened or those who are not here uh, for the first message, um, we spoke about how your mouth is a powerful tool that God has given to you and I. And uh, we look at the book of Luke um, 21, where the scripture says, the Lord says, I will give you a mouth and wisdom that your adversaries cannot shut down. Luke chapter 21. And we also look at the book of um, Psalm 81, where it says, <laughs> open your mouth wide and I will fill it. <clears throat> open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And we saw in Job 22, it said, begin to decree a thing and it will be established. I've given you a mouth. Open it wide, now begin to decree. And we saw in the book of, um, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> we saw in the book of Proverbs chapter 18, it says, in your tongue is life and death. In your tongue is life and death. So this is the summary of what we shared the last time. But today we just want to go a step further. And uh, this is how I'm going to start. <sighs> if you, if, would, if I, would I be wrong if I say what our fathers in faith and mothers in faith, the believers before us, if I say the challenges they face then what we are facing now seems to be a harder one in this day and age because of technology and the policies. You see, we are facing tremendous difficulties as believers today. The policies, especially the policies against our core values, the policies about our ways of life, our ways of life. You see, the technology has not helped matters, taking us away, you know, taking us away. We become very busy with technologies. These are things, these are peculiar challenges that I, I'm, I'm tempted to say were not very common those days. But our God has not changed. The standard of God has not changed. He has given us authority over serpent and scorpion and over the powers of the enemies. He says, if we resist Satan, he will flee. 
Ask, it shall be given. Seek, you will find. A knock, the door will open. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I will deliver him from them all. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You see, the hope that is deferred makes the heart sick. But it says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. So if you are hopeful, like we have seen this morning, it will not be cut short. So the summary of the whole thing is, even though we are facing some very peculiar challenges, we have a God that is faithful. He says, even when you are not faithful, he is still faithful anyway. And if he begins to mark iniquity, his word says, no one will remain standing. Nobody will remain standing. If God decides to begin to mark iniquity now, nobody will be standing. So we are living by mercy and grace because of his faithfulness. Because of his faithfulness. Having said all of that, all of those, and that's the reason why I quoted those scriptures. But there's one thing, there's one thing that we need to do on our path. If our fathers in faith, if our brothers and sisters, believers before us, are not face, didn't face the kind of peculiar challenges that we face now, because if, take it or leave it, the technology, technological advancement is amazing. Sometimes you can't even catch up. The policies come in a very subtle ways. The policies come in a very subtle ways, and they tend to take the core values away, and we tend to conform inadvertently. What do we do? We need to move from being reactive and defensive into being on the offensive. And I will explain. We need, the God strategy has not changed. His standard has not changed. But tactically, we have got, we've got to also modify a few things. We've got to do a few things. And that's why the scripture says, in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1, Paul says, uh, he was admonishing us, says, my brothers and sisters, offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He says, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Only then, only then, are we going to see the will of God concerning us. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. So we cannot conform. Even if we want to. We can't. We can't. You see, the world are not reading Bibles anymore. They are reading our lives. So we don't necessarily, you don't necessarily say you are a Christian in your place of work. You don't have to. They know. They know your core values. They know the things you will not do. So they are reading your life. And that is why we cannot conform. We can't. Because we are carrying something, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has created us in his own image for his own pleasure. His breath is in us. So we are carrying something. It is a time to move away from being reactive to situations, challenges, issues, to being on the offensive, because that is who our God is. Joshua, just for us to know our God is a strategist. Joshua defeated Jericho by going by God's strategy. But Joshua went 
to high without consulting God, he was defeated. So when he had the, his best victory, that was when he suffered the greatest loss. And that is why when we are winning, when a man is successful, that is when a man is very vulnerable. So when he was defeated in I, he ran back to God. Because he thought you can use the same strategy with God. And the Lord now said, you are going to use ambush this time around. It's a different strategy from the one you used against Jericho. So you can see that even though his God's standard does not change, he applies tools, he applies strategy. So we also, at a time like this, it's a time for us to begin to use the wisdom of God in a way <clears throat> that we have never used it before. Tenaciously and proactively. Thank God for what Matty P shared earlier. He's a big God. He's not a small God. We can't box him into a corner. It's about him, not about us. And that is why when it comes to what is happening around the world now, we know that the only one we can cry or call onto is God Almighty. We can't depend on our intellect. We can't depend on our knowledge, our skills. We can't. We can't. But there are things that God has put in there for us to use. And that's what we want to look at today. So it's not going to be a long message, but time to pray. Because he's a good God. So I'll begin to look at the slides. So we want to look at what may help in this situation. What may help? What may help? Speaking will help. Speaking will help. Bible says the Lord will deliver us from arrows that flies by day and terrors of the night. So that means arrows are flying on a daily basis. Spiritual arrows, because we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness in high places. And the scripture says, our weapon of warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. I don't know if many of us know that the Muslim, the Muslim, they pray five times a day. The Muslim, they will wake up 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. to begin to speak into the day while we are still sleeping. Let us assume my brother here not is a Muslim. I am a Christian. We are going for a job interview. The same job interview. He's been called for an interview. I've been called to an interview. The same interview. He is a Muslim. He will wake up 4 a.m. He will begin to speak to that day. Bible says we should profess and speak to the day. I'm coming, I'm coming to that scripture. So my brother here, let's say his name is Ibrahim. He begins to speak to that day. He takes over, takes control. He wants to take control by whatever power, whether prophetically or whatever. And I am still sleeping. So by the time he wakes up, I wake up in the morning, 7 a.m., 6 a.m., Father, thank you. Uh, he has already spoken to the day, remember? And we are going to the same interview. From the book of Job, chapter 1 to chapter 2, David had issues. He had challenges in his life. From chapter 2, chapter 3 of the book of Job up to chapter 37, David, uh, sorry, uh, Job and his friends were lamenting to God. 
from Job, Job 3 to Job 37, they were lamenting. God did not speak. And when God spoke, the first thing he said, have you spoken to the day? Have you commanded? Have you ever given order and command to the morning? Or shown the dawn its place? That it may take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it. God was telling Job. Now, you may say this does not apply to you. No problem. But the scripture was written for our own benefit. The Bible is like our manual. So we've, we look at how God deals with issues in the scripture. And then we can apply it to our lives. So in this day and age, with what is happening, will it be wrong to say when we wake up very early, we begin to speak to our day. Today you are going to, be, you are going to favor me. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Today I will be the head and not be the tail in the name of Jesus. Today I am victorious. I am winning because I know I am peculiar. I am chosen by God Almighty. Today I will enjoy the faithfulness of God because he is faithful. Today I will enjoy the mercy and the grace of God Almighty. Today people will favor me because I am favored by God. Today, my boss will favor me. Today, I will win. Today, my children will conquer. You prophesy into your day. You prophesy into your day. Now, you are in control because God has given you the authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He has given you authority over serpent and scorpion and over the powers of the enemy. So you have taken control of the day. Praise the Lord. It is a dangerous time. It is a time for us also to become dangerous. Why? Let me give us a good example. It's not part of what I plan to preach, but I will mention it. Paul spoke most about love. Paul, if you are talking about, if you, if you look at all the disciples of Christ, all the followers of Christ, Paul was the one that spoke most about love. Am I correct? But when Paul was on an assignment to evangelize, and by Jesus was going to stop him from preaching the gospel, what did Paul do? He spoke blindness. Momentarily, because nothing is going to stand in the way. Paul was very dangerous at that moment. We are dangerous too. The Bible says we are fearfully made. We are, you and I are fearfully made. Chosen, peculiar. So that if, if you have billions of people all over the world, there's no two of me. No two of you. So our mouth is very important, it's a tool. Number two, being sensitive at this day and age with what we face, with what is going through in our, in our environment around us, spiritually and physically, we need to be sensitive. It is not a time not to be sensitive. You see, God loves us so much. He says nothing can separate us from his love, right? We wake up in the morning, we become very busy, including myself. We are so busy, we are carried away by what we do. We need to put food on our table, right? It's a legitimate thing. It's legitimate. So you and I become very busy, entangled in what is happening around us. We walk, we do all sorts of things. Most times, because we are human beings, we even forget to pray. Right? We are human beings. We forget to pray. It's not a crime. It's not a sin. We have a loving father. What does he do? He come in the night to speak to us. That is how much he loves us. 
And yet he comes in the night to speak to us. We just say, oh, it's just a dream. No, it's not a dream. No dream is useless. I know that long time ago, I can sit down and tell you about dreams and things I've seen for a whole day, just for you to know that dream, no dream is useless. No, not one single dream is useless. Please take it from me. If there's anything you are taking away today, please, I beg of you, no single dream is useless. Look at the scripture. He has said it. He used dream to speak to Joseph. Don't let that girl go. She's pregnant of the Holy Spirit. You must marry her. She, he used dream. Now it's time to take him away. Take Jesus and go to Egypt. Go and hide there temporarily. He used dream. It's now time to come back. He used dream. The Magi, uh, the three wise men that came. He said, don't go back through the source you came. He used dreams. God used dreams. Joseph, he talks to us using dreams. It's a time. A time like this is a time and a moment for us to be very, very sensitive. And one thing with the Holy Spirit that I have realized with dreams, when you have a book and you wake up in the morning and you write your dreams, the Holy Spirit is like, oh, he's interested. Okay. Let's go. But when we wake up in the morning, uh, that's just a dream. Mm, dreams, dreams, are f- dreams, dreams are foolish. Sometimes they don't make sense. So it means you're just telling the Holy Spirit, I'm not keen. And in our prayer group, we've, people have practiced this. They take a dream book just by their bedside. And you'll be amazed how God will take you on a journey. Because now he knows by faith you want to work with him and you want to be attentive. If somebody throws, if this is an information here, it doesn't mean sense to a lot of people. But to me it means a lot. And that's what I'm preaching now. So information that you think is important and is good, you make good use, good use of it. That's with the Holy Spirit. You see? In a dream, a vision of the night. It's like a vision in the night. God gives warning. He gives warning. He can tell us what is going to happen. And I pray that the Lord will help us on a daily basis to understand these things. The first thing is, let's speak concerning situation. Things that you don't like, let's reject it. Let's speak out prayerfully. When there's a thought in our heart, no, I bind you in the name of, you need to see me when I'm on my way to work from train station, from my, from my train, station, train station to my place of work, it's like, I'm, it's like warfare because I just speak. Because that's a moment, free time for me. I begin to speak. If a thought comes, no, I bind you in Jesus' name. You won't take over me. No, that's not it. Oh, no, no that is, I speak out. We speak. He has given. He says he has given us mouth. He promised he will give us mouth. He gave us the mouth. He says we should use the mouth, and he told us what the mouth can do: life and death. I need to quickly move on. The scripture I quoted earlier: sacrifice. Our body, we should offer our body as a living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto Him. This is our true and proper worship. It says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. Now, people, when we say sacrifice, people will think, some, yes, it could be physical body, yes, because our body is the temple of God Almighty, right? It's his temple. But sacrifice does not necessarily mean working hard to please God. It could be humbling, hum, by hum, humbling yourself and giving up Something. You just give, give up something. If you look at the definition of sacrifice in the dictionary, it's giving up something. So what are we giving up for God? What can we give up in a time like this? What can we give up? What can we give up? Are there things that we can give up? Of course. Of course, a lot, but it's the spirit that leads. I can't give you a template. The spirit will speak to you. The Bible says the spirit of God ministers to, this, to our spirit. 
that we are the children of God. The Spirit can minister. You see, it's amazing how the Spirit can speak when we are, when we are ready and keen to listen. One of those, just an experiment, just lock yourself in a room for like two hours. I say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't know what's happening. I just want to hear from you. Can you please speak to me? Just be calm. Stay there. It's you and I today. I don't know. I just need you to speak to me. They say you speak. We'll be amazed. But we are too busy, including me. All of us are busy. But the devil, Satan, is busy. Subtle, in a subtle way, introducing things and policies, technologies that will just push us away, push us away, push us away and get us busy and get, we get caught in that rat race. That's, that is what the enemy wants to achieve. So going back to where I started, we are not facing the same battles with our fathers in faith that are gone some 60, 50, 70, 100 years ago. Not the same battle. So we cannot expect that we will just address it the same way they address it. We have a God who is a strategist. So already we know God can deploy, apply, and push out strategy to fight battles. And we've seen it several ways. So what battle can we use? What can we do? It's time for us to be very, very sensitive in the spirit. Paul, uh, sorry, uh, David. David was going through a difficult time. He was going through a difficult time. And he realized that one thing that can stand between him and God is his soul. So he was speaking to his soul in Psalm 103. My soul, you must praise the Lord. My soul, you must bless the Lord. Sometimes we can be very discouraged. It's okay to be discouraged. But remaining there is the problem. We've got to pick ourselves up. Otherwise, we'll be there and be there forever. God forbid. But David was telling himself, telling his soul, you can't disappoint me. You can't. You must, you must bless the Lord. So we use our own mouth to speak to situations and speak to ourselves. And that is why those who, the motivational speakers, they, tell, they say, you, sp you need to speak out, you need to speak to, they encourage themselves. We need to also encourage ourselves and encourage our souls because our soul is the seat of our emotion. So, as I round up, hear my prayer, that's David. Hide not your face from me, O Lord. You see? So, Come, answer my prayer speedily on my soul. Because the whole of Psalm 102 was about issues that David was going through. And when he got to Psalm 103, he began to speak to his soul, you must praise the Lord. And finally, I thought the Lord dropped this in my spirit, and I thought I should share it with us. Sacrifice may not necessarily be working hard to please God. It's humbling, giving things hope for him. Because when we talk about sacrifice, sacrifice, people think, oh, you've got to work to please. You can't please God. I can't please God. No one can please God. Our righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. The, most right, the person who claims to be very righteous is like a filthy rag before God. But when we humbly just give up some things, that's a sacrifice. Maybe you watch TV like, uh, you, we like our entertainment. You watch TV like six hours. Nobody is giving you being prescriptive here. Maybe watch TV six hours. Okay, today I just want to watch TV for one hour. I'll give five hours to God or four hours to God. Okay, I'll start by meeting God in, in the middle. I'll give you God. I watch my TV. I like my TV. I'll give you three hours. I'll take three hours. It's a good way to start. Oh, um, I... I I don't, I like my food. I, I don't like joking with my food. Okay, um, maybe mm, I'll just skip, today I will skip breakfast. Just, just to say, 
when we skip, when we fast, you are not trying to prove to God, I am holy. You just humble yourself. You humble your spirit. You humble your body. Because this body, the container that contains our soul and our spirit, this body demands a lot from us. So when we deny the body, we are humbling ourselves before him and say, Lord, I want to hear from you, for example, concerning the situation. We can meet him in the halfway and start from there and then continue to build on and we continue to gain more grants. So that's where I'm finishing to now, this morning. And we're going to pray. It's a challenging time, we all know. And it's easy for us to just feel, okay, um, I've tried all I need to try. Maybe I'm not the only one in this boat. Maybe it's God's will. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. And sometimes we may say, oh, I want to do it, but I find myself not doing it. Yeah, you are not alone. It's a difficult and challenging time. I remember that our parents will walk many distance. Even in Europe, early days, when there was no car, there was no, they said that they ride a horse or they walk long distance. And they were very strong those days, you know. But now we have cars, you know, luxury, all sorts of luxuries. If you don't, even if you don't want to eat, they are throwing food at you. Your place of work, they are throwing it. Back home, every meeting, every year and there, food, they just throw it, you know. And we also enjoy it. It's not a crime, it's not a sin. But look at what the enemy is using subtly, you know, subtly using these things. Look at policies that government, all the policies from government. It's a legitimate, there are legitimate policies. Bible says not everything that is expedient is lawful. Not everything that is lawful is expedient. Right? My wife is acknowledging, so <laughs> I know me. <clears throat> not everything that is expedient is lawful. Not everything that is lawful is expedient. So legitimately they are creating their policies. These policies may not be in our favor. We have, I've never heard that people go to church to protest, but people are protesting in churches now, even protesting naked, based on what they believe. So it's an encroachment on us. You see? It's an encroachment. So Father, we thank you. We honor you, Lord. We thank you because we know you are a faithful God. We thank you because you have not left us alone. We thank you because you are a powerful and mighty God. We thank you, Lord, because you are in this with us. We thank you, Lord, because on a daily basis, we know you continue to give us wisdom and revelation to take us through. The word says, if we call unto you, you will answer us. And that's why we are calling unto you this morning. We commit New Zealand into your hands. We commit this country into your hands. We commit the whole world into your hands. The glob global crisis, the pandemic, the war, Father, we say, Lord, intervene. Have your way in our lives. Father, have your way in a time like this in our lives. Give us the courage to be able to speak out openly and in our closet in the name of Jesus. Help us, Almighty Father, on a daily basis to speak concerning situation. Help us, Almighty Father, on a daily basis to be attentive in the, in the, in the spirit and to listen to you, even our dreams, and take them seriously. Help us, Almighty Father, to, to, to pull down strongholds that the enemy wants to use to oppress and suppress us. We commit all the churches all over the world into your hands. The word says you will build your church and the gate of hell will not prevail. We know the gate of hell will not prevail because we know you have never lost any battle. You are not going to lose this one. And that's why we say thank you, Heavenly Father. We know in whom we trust. He's a mighty man of war. Bible says in the book of um, Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 that you are a man of war. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. You are a man of war. And in Exodus chapter 14 verse 14, you will fight our battles, we will hold our peace. Father, we hand over every battle to you. 
and we know you are in control. Thank you, faithful Father. Everyone who needs encouragement here this morning, Father, we thank you for encouragement. Everyone who needs healing here this morning, Father, we thank you for healing. Everyone who is going through persecution here this morning, Father, we thank you you have set them free in the name of Jesus. He that the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We want to say, Lord, thank you. Glory be to you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much.